Hi everybody, my name is Tiffany. Thank you for joining me on my channel today. <sighs> today I'm going to talk about what to do before you start looking for a job as a developer. So, a lot of people I feel like just kind of jump in to start finding a job once they get out of coding boot camp or once they've been trying to, or once they've been learning on their own. They're like, okay, let me go out and find a job. But you need to prepare to find your job first. You can't just go out. Some people can, but I recommend preparing yourself before going out there and figuring out what's going on. So, with that being said, <laughs> let me... I got a list. I don't know. You don't probably don't know this about me, but I like lists and things. So, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to have a list. <laughs> okay. So the first thing I have is you need a portfolio with your projects. Now, a lot of people talk about, you know, you need a portfolio, blah, 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 blah. But what's most important about having projects is that you have something to talk about in interviews. And that's the most important thing. As long as you have something to talk about in interviews, like a project that you can literally go on and on about, about or find something like that was really good about it that you contributed to, that's the important thing about projects. So um, I recommend having a portfolio, but specifically of projects that you feel passionate about things that you like when people like bring it up in an interview you're like oh yes and i did this and i did that and we accomplished this and i worked with a team of, of this many people and we had this effect or maybe it was just an own your own personal project right and you were like i was so happy because it took me so long to figure this out that's what you need to be um it, like you need to have projects like that that you can get excited about in interviews and that you could talk about because that's what's gonna win the interviewers over like if you're passionate about what you're talking about that is what's gonna seep through and that's what's gonna set you apart from others so um, having a, a portfolio I might do another video on a portfolio I don't really um, I'm not like a portfolio guru, but I have a couple tips that um, that I used for my portfolio and stuff like that, and things that people have told me that maybe I haven't implemented yet, but I should. <laughs> so I could definitely do a video on that, on sharing that, and I probably will in the future. Uh, okay, so the next thing is you need to skim through job descriptions. Okay, a lot of people they just go out and they're like, okay, I have a I have a resume with the technologies I learned and the projects I did um, but it might be a wide array of knowledge like I recommend focusing your resume on either front-end back-end or full stack web development um, and specifically as it tailors to coding like that's what you need to do don't try to mix and match and things like that or have, if you're not truly going to be full stack, then you need to figure out which one that you're going to do, right? Like have back end projects if you're back in. Have front end projects if you're going for a front end job. If you're going for a full stack web development job, have projects. Show projects on your resume and technologies on your resume that make it look like you're a full stack web developer I think it could get confusing because there are so many things that you could do you could be a front-end developer you could be a full stack developer you could do those things but it gets confusing on your resume when you have all different directions and you don't know what you want to focus on and it shows like people would look at your resume and be like well what do you want to do and I've had that happen to me for before it happens right what do you want to do Tiffany and I'm like well, I could do everything. Well, no, what do you really want to do? You know what I mean? So focus on something and make sure it's something that you enjoy doing. So that's why I recommend looking at job descriptions so you can get an idea of, okay, this is a full stack web developer job. This is a front end job and they're using these technologies. So I need to make sure that if I don't have that technology listed, either I'm actively learning it if, you know, if you want to learn it or 
that you throw away the technologies that have nothing to do with the specific um, area that you want to focus in. It's hard, it's difficult, because you may have more front-end skills and less back-end skills, or you may be full stack and you know about databases and you know about the front end and the back end and you know how to connect those two and that's awesome right that's what i do and that's awesome but what you need to do is make sure that you are um tailoring your resume to make it look like you are that person you don't want them to be confused you want them to get to your resume and they know exactly what you want to do and who you are now it may not be, you know, too much on your resume with it being like entry level, but they have an idea of what you know and what you're capable of doing. And that's the important thing. The third thing is to build your online presence. I know a lot of people that are like, you don't need a portfolio online. You don't need to go on LinkedIn and you don't need, but I feel like as time progresses and more and more people are getting into this field, I think it's imperative that you set yourself apart online. Like you need to have some kind of um, something about your portfolio that pops, that stands out. There's tons of things you could do with jQuery and um, things like that. If you're into jQuery, there are projects that you could do that can um, make your resume pop. There's APIs that you could use that can make your resume, I mean, make your resume, your portfolio look better. And I'm talking about portfolio, but I'm mentioning online presence and your your portfolio online is your online presence as well. So think about that. So have a few projects on your portfolio that you could showcase. Um, also, I know people don't like it, but LinkedIn, make sure that when you're um, like on your LinkedIn page, it again is showing who you are, um, what you're capable of. If you're transferring um, from a different industry into development, then for sure there are transferable skills, right? Showcase those. That sets you apart. That makes you different. So it's going to take a lot more than, um, you know, a couple minutes to kind of do this. You need time. Uh, the, the last and final thing that I have is... Um, start attending meetups right and don't attend meetups and say hey I'm looking for a job attend meetups just to talk to other people and not necessarily like I said hey I'm looking for a job no attend meetups and be like hey you know I'm involved with this this is what I'm doing I did the coding boot camp and right now I'm just you know trying to build my skill set say that or something to that extent and I did not do this and I feel like it kind of hindered me I feel like when I was going to meetups right after coding boot camp a lot of my pitch line was I need a job I'm looking for a job and it was kind of like people were like oh well here's some things and a lot of those things did not work out and I felt a little awkward going back to those meetups because I'm like well I wasn't good enough for their company so it's kind of awkward like talking to them now and I still don't have a job and you know stuff like that that's what I was thinking at that time don't have that negative feeling. <laughs> don't be that way. However, don't go into meetups and like the first thing you mention is that you need a job. Yes, people want to help you, but what looks better is if you're like, hey, I'm improving my skills. And I notice you're like, you mentioned that you're a senior developer. Do you have any tips for me? That's, I feel like that's more impactful than going in saying I need a job, right? Gimme, 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 instead of, like you know things that I don't know and I really just want to sit down and have a conversation about those things that you know that I don't know and hopefully you know I can be an asset to you in some kind of way you know so I feel like that's what it's about and that's what you need to be doing don't those are the tips that I had or the you know things that I can think of that you need to do before you start finding a job um, yeah, ultimately, it's all about your approach and what works for you. If these don't work for you, then throw them out the window and make your own, right? Um, 
but I'm just trying to say like what I found to be impactful and helpful for me and hopefully they'll help you in some way. So I thank you all for watching. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you next time with another video. Bye guys.